Welcome to the Counting and Clapping tutorial series created by the junior high band teachers of the Gilbert Unified School District in Gilbert, Arizona. Counting and Clapping tutorial number six, eighth rests. At the end of this tutorial, you should understand how to count and clap eighth rests, how to count and clap various rhythm patterns containing a mixture of notes and rests that include eighth rests. To be successful, you need to already understand the concepts taught in these earlier tutorials. All rhythm tree tutorials, basic time signatures and beats, counting and clapping part one conventions, part two whole half and quarter notes, part three whole half and quarter rests, part four ties and dotted half notes, and part five eighth notes. We'll start by reviewing the counting and not clapping of eighth rests. Remember to check the top number of the time signature for the required number of beats per bar. In our example, the top number is a four, so all measures must have four beats. Be sure to write the counting directly underneath the rests and number all of the beats consecutively. Use a plus sign in between the numbers. One plus, two plus, like that. Rests don't get claps. Pulse the rests with your hand apart while you count out loud. Say and where you see the plus sign. Our example here, we have three and four and. Eighth rests are twice as fast as quarter rests. Here's a video showing the correct way to count and not clap four quarter rests. One, two, three, four. Now here's a video showing you that eighth rests are counted twice as fast as quarters. One and two and three and four and. When we start to mix eighth notes and eighth rests together, along with other types of note values, we start to see some common mistakes. Forgetting to use a plus sign causes more numbers than the time signature allows. Our time signature has a four on the top, so every measure must have four beats. If we put a number under every single eighth rest here in measure one, we'll have too many numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We didn't use the plus sign, and we have more than four beats in that measure. That's why that is wrong. Using the same number more than once in a bar is also a common mistake that we see. In this example, we have one and one and one and one and. Well, again, we need to get to four and have four beats in the measure, so this would be wrong. One of the biggest mistakes we see is when people reverse the number and the plus sign and put the plus sign first. In this example, we should start every measure with the number one. That's our rule. But here we have and one, and two, and three, and four, and we didn't start with the number one. So that is another common mistake. Even if we start out right, like in measure four, the two beamed eighth notes, we can start with one and. But we see an eighth rest right next to it, so sometimes we feel the need to put an and there and put and two. Well, that would not be correct because then we have two ands right next to each other. And then if we get it correct in the next beat, we start with three and, that's right, but we would not end with and four because then we again have two ands together. Those two are incorrect. So what is the right way to do these measures? Let's take a look. In the first measure, we have all eighth rests. So we have to count our numbers and the ands in between. One and two and three and four and. All four beats are there and we've used plus signs where the ands go. The next measure is an eighth note followed by an eighth rest. Everything in that measure is an eighth. One and two and three and four and. Notice that all of the eighth notes are underlined for claps and all of the ands are not underlined because they're rests. Measure two and measure three are mirror opposites of each other. 
Measure two has the eighth notes on the numbers and the eighth rests on the ands. Measure three has the eighth rests on the numbers and the eighth notes on the ands. So we still have to start with the number one and we have one and two and three and four and, but now the ands are underlined because we clap those and we don't clap where the numbers are because they're rests. The last measure, we start out with two beamed eighth notes, both getting claps, one and, and then we have two more eighths, so it's going to be two and. The only difference is the two is hands apart because it's a rest, and the and gets a clap, two and. Then we have a single eighth note, three with a clap, followed by an eighth rest, and with our hands apart, three and. We end with two eighths, but an eighth rest first, four, with our hands apart, and then an and on the last eighth note with a clap, four and. Now let's take a look at a few examples where we take eighth rests and add it to the things we've learned in previous tutorials. Our first example starts with two eighth notes and a quarter note one and two. They all get claps. Then we move on to two more eighths, an eighth rest followed by an eighth note. So we're going to have three and, the three is a rest with hands apart, and the and gets a clap, three and. We end with two more eighths, an eighth rest followed by an eighth note. So the eighth rest is hands apart on count four, followed by an eighth note, clap on the and after the four, four and. In measure two, we start with an eighth rest on count one, and then an eighth note on the and after count one. One and, hands apart, and then a clap. Then two simple beamed eighth notes together, two and, both with claps. A quarter rest on count three, hands apart, and a quarter note on count four with a clap. Measure three starts with a half note worth two counts, so we clap on count one, keep our hands together for count two, one, two. Then we move on to two eighths, a note first, an eighth rest second, clap, and then no clap, three and. Now we have a quarter note tied across the measure to another quarter note, so clap on count four for the quarter note, keep our hands together, and tie it to count one in the next measure, four, one. Then we have two eighths, an eighth note first, and an eighth rest after it, so a clap and then a no clap, two and. And then we have two more eighths, this time starting with an eighth rest and going to an eighth note, so no clap on three, but a clap on the and, three and. And we end with a quarter rest, hands apart, count four. Here is a video showing the correct counting and clapping for example number one. Let's take a look at a second example. Example number two starts easily enough with a dotted half note worth three counts. Clap on count one and keep our hands together while we count two and three. One, two, three. Then we have two eighth notes, so we know we're going to go four and. The last eighth note on the and is tied to the next measure to a whole note. So we clap on four, we clap on the and, and then we keep our hands together while we continue to count one, two, three, four in the next measure. Four and one, two, three, four. The next measure starts with a quarter rest, hands apart, count one, and then we have two eighths, an eighth rest followed by an eighth note, two and, no clap and then clap. Then two more eighths beam together, both get claps, three and, and then two more eighths to end the measure, four and, with the four being hands apart and the and getting a clap. The last measure starts out with two eighths, an eighth note followed by an eighth rest, one and, the one gets a clap, the and does not. Then two more eighths, starting with an eighth rest, into an eighth note. So we have two and, 
the two hands apart, the and with a clap. We end the measure with a half rest worth two counts, hands apart, three, four. Here's a video showing the correct counting and clapping for example number two. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four. Our last example is particularly tricky. We start out with two sets of beamed eighth notes. One and two and. That's going to be our counting. But the middle two eighth notes are tied together. So we clap on count one. We clap on the and. Then we keep our hands together because we're tying across to count two. And then we clap again on the and after two. It looks like this. One and two and. Notice no clap on count two because it's tied to the and before it. Right after that, we have two more eighths. An eighth rest for count three and an eighth note for the and after count three. Three and. No clap on the rest. Yes, clap on the eighth note. Then we end with an eighth note followed by an eighth rest four and. The next measure has four beamed eighth notes together, but the last one is tied to the quarter note that comes after it. So we're going to count one and two and, then we're going to count three on the quarter note, but we're not going to clap count three because it's tied to the and after count two. So it would look like this, one and two and three. After that, we have two eighths, four on the rest and and on the eighth note that we clap on. But that last eighth note is tied across the measure to the count one quarter note in the next measure. So we're going to count four and one on this next part, but we don't clap on the one because it's tied together. Four and one. We keep our hands together between the and and the one because we're making a longer note. Then we have a very simple quarter note on count two. Then we have two eighths, three and, clap, no clap, and we end that measure with a quarter rest, no clap, four. The last measure starts out with four eighths, an eighth rest, an eighth note, an eighth rest, and an eighth note. So it's going to be one and two and, and the claps are going to come on the notes, which are on the ands, one and two and. Count three is a quarter rest by itself with our hands apart. And we end example number three with count four, four and, two eighths, note and rest. Here's a video showing the correct counting and clapping for our final example number three. One and two and three and four and one and two and three, four and one. Two, three, and four, one, and two, and three, four, and. This tutorial explained how to count and clap eighth rests. It provided examples of rhythm patterns containing a mixture of notes and rests that included eighth rests. The next tutorial in this series adds single and double beamed sixteenth notes to various rhythm patterns.